I'm about to teach my first ever jujitsu class and I'm just a blue belt. All right, everybody got their partner. One, two, three. I'm in the city that sounds like an apology and where even the buses say sorry. The city of Surrey is near Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada and is home to Kaboom BJJ, run by Black Belt Beer Bot, where the students follow a controversial method of training where they never actually drill any techniques and only do live training. I'll be meeting Kabir for the first time today as he lets me take the reins to coach his class full of jujitsu practitioners of all levels who I've never spoken to, let alone trained with. Think about getting their hands and their elbows out of the way. The last thing I want to do is run a bad training session for paying students. Everybody's doing something that maybe we shouldn't be doing. <laughs> and as a blue belt, I definitely won't be the most experienced or the most technical person in the room. In fact, some people still even consider blue belt to be a beginner belt. But with Kabir being my personal Yoda, he's got the tips. I'll do my best to implement this unique training methodology. And along the way, hopefully learn way more about the role of the coach and what it truly takes to design and run a productive training session. How did the class go for you? What rating would you give? If you had stayed like you were over the first 15 minutes. And after all, the only way to get truly good at something is to jump in, make mistakes, and hopefully learn from them. <laughs>
the fast disguise, the sprinting coach. For most people's like biggest hurdle on coaching is usually like comfort leading a room. Okay, why am I nervous? It's natural. But I think your plan is perfect. Got that. So I need good. to go. I'm gonna. I need to go back to my hotel room and write it all down. Yeah. And I'm gonna have my phone with me. How do you think I'm? How do you think it's gonna go tonight? Fucking great. Why not? I guess we should get the bill. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, dope. After leaving really sushi nice. with Kabir, my head was spinning with questions and I wondered if I'd be able to do the simplest things. Oh, just a quick interruption. We filmed an entire one hour discussion where Kabir actually walked me through how to plan the class. So if you'd like to see this and access future members only content as well as support the channel, hit the join button below or join my Patreon. The link is in the description. Now back to the video. With a bit of time before class, I washed my sweaty gi from sparring earlier and I went over my notes for tonight's lesson plan. All right, so here's the plan. Class is one hour. We start with a warm up, and then we move into the main lesson. Have some backup games if there's time, and then finish with some full rolls. And we'll focus on the dogfight position and Kimura control since they've been working on that lately. For the warm up, we'll do one minute rounds of grip fighting and takedown slash guard pole games. None of this running around in circles or doing calisthenics. People are paying money here. Next, we dive into the main lesson progressively harder games from the dogfight. Then, like I said, if time permits, we'll do a couple backup games on Kimura Control and finish with full rolls. And flexibility is key, so we might need to repeat some games or skip some altogether. And for the full class plan, check out the free Google Doc linked in the description. I headed back to Kaboom a bit early and saw that the kids class was in session. And I reflected on the fact that I would soon be standing up there myself. This wasn't just about tonight's class. It actually all goes back to when I first started exploring this approach. After competing 60 plus times in two years, I felt like I wasn't progressing. Then after quitting my gym and separating my shoulder, a black belt named Al Lagura messaged me on Instagram and suggested that I read about ecological dynamics. And that's when it clicked. I'd been using this method without even realizing it. Digging deeper, I found that it was pretty controversial and non-traditional, but it confirmed a lot of my suspicions and it was backed by a whole lot of science. And tonight's class builds on that. It's another step in my jujitsu journey, helping me learn more about this training method and share it with others. Despite my imposter syndrome as a blue belt, I need to grow into a confident coach by the time I hit black belt, and I might as well start now. As the kids class ended, folks started to trickle in for the adults class, and we got ready to start. And with little to no ado, it was time. Josh Beam is running this class as a giant experiment. Hi everybody, I'm Josh. So like he said, we're doing a little bit of an experiment. And if you have any questions, ask Kabir, cause I probably won't be able to answer them. Right before we get started though, I'm gonna deliver a line for the video. So if you can come over here. I'm about to teach my first ever jujitsu class and I'm just a blue belt. Classic YouTuber. There we go. All right, that's it. We're gonna get into the warm ups. Um, grip fighting game, um, this one, your goal is just to have uh, more hands on your partner than they have on you at any given time. Three, two, one, go. You can get two hands, you can get a collar and a hand. You try to keep those points controlled and away from you. More hands on your partner than they have on you. Still not entirely sure what I'm doing. I think there's a thing about faking it until you make it. Yeah, maybe you should take the risk, strip it, advantage. just like little things like that. Maybe times where you can take risks and try to strip those grips. Yeah, good. Okay. keep stripping his grips off. Push his hands away from you so they can't grab onto you again. One way that you can win um, is if you're able to get a connection to the leg. Another way you can win this game, if you're able to connect to your partner and sit down into some form of guard. Three, two, one, go. Think about getting their hands and their elbows out of the way so you can find a leg. All right, time. All right, I think we got an odd number. Everything seemed to be going pretty well until I made my first mistake. I was wasting a lot of class time trying to wait for everybody to get their partners. The odd man out situation. The whole room doesn't have to wait for that. All right, okay. He's got the tips. <laughs> Another quick interruption, if you want to see the full uncut class, that's available in a separate video and I'll leave the link in the description, totally free. All right, back to the video. We were done with the warm up games now, so it was time to move on to the main part of the class. Um, so for this next one, 
Um, we're gonna start from this situation that sometimes people refer to as a dogfight situation. Um, it, you might have, let's turn up the other way so we can see. Um, um, and you are trying to come up. Uh, so from here, my only job um, is gonna be, um, 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 actually for this game, we're gonna start um, just one hand posted on the mat here. Um, he's gonna try to prevent me from getting to, or actually, sorry, this is gonna be the second game. We're gonna go scratch all that for a second. Um, for the very first game, we're just gonna play a continuous game where I have to hold his leg between my legs. That's gonna be the first game. Um, so it's just a continuous game. I just have to hold his leg. All right, anybody questions on that? I know I kind of confused the steps a little bit. Three, two, one. Now that I'd already wasted a bunch of time and butchered those instructions, I felt like the class had taken a turn for the worst. You just have to keep his one leg between your two legs. Just trying to keep their leg. Nice, nice, yep, that's it, that's it. You got the leg out. Oh, I was worried a student had just hurt himself and even worse on my watch. Are you okay? Like, seeing what's happening with everybody. There's so many people. So it's hard to just like glance at different pairs of people and understand quickly on the fly what's happening. Do they switch every time? Yeah, switch it, switch, uh, switch every time a wing condition is met. Uh, do you know if you said it? I think I did say it, because I said it, I think so. Are y'all switching? I need to take a deep breath, this is hard. You feeling the pressure, bro? Visibly apparent. I am feeling the pressure. Maybe I was too cavalier, thinking I could do this and excel at it the first time, when in reality, I was in way over my head. Classic unconscious incompetence. Not only had I screwed up the class, but I was a guest in Kabir's gym, which is like letting somebody into your home. He trusted me, and I fucked it up. But then I remembered what we talked about over sushi. You can totally fuck up class. I fuck up class all the time. Except I'm the only one who knows. <laughs> yeah. Right? And if you can just embrace that, then you can actually start reiterating, making things better. The group is just trying to move and engage and grapple. And aside from all that, I didn't come all this way just to give up. I feel like absolute garbage. I've not felt this stressed in a long time. <laughs> Man, that fucking jet lag. The main video is gonna be me coaching Kabir's class tomorrow, for the first time ever. Um, and it's gonna be awesome. Thank you, Kabir, for doing that. For now, I just need to get some sleep. It's been a long, it's been a long trip. How do you feel with this? That's okay, dude. I'm not entirely sure, because as I was like demonstrating the game, I was now unsure about the starting position. And there's also this situation that's happening now where people are just like going to their back. This. Yeah. Here, if I'm you, I'm calling time switching. All right, time. Before we switch partners, one more, one more wing condition here. Everything else is the same except if the defending player goes to his back, he loses and we reset. All right, let's do it. And time. I may have fixed one thing, but we still had another game and some full rolls to get through. I managed to explain the next game flawlessly. Pulling your arm, but you're going to be in this figure four position. All right, ready and go. And then we moved on to the final part of class, live rolling. For sparring, we're gonna start in a seated versus standing situation. So this is just an open roll. Think about trying to get to control positions like we were working on with the Kimura today. All right, find a partner, three, two, one. What do you think was the best part of your practice? Yeah, I like it, trying to work to the move of the day. First day. Oh, he got the, it. oh. Trying it. This is first day, right? Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Is this a Christmas miracle? Who knew? We had Kimura's and dogfight. Are you super proud, like your child just walked? It's kind of amazing. <laughs> yeah. I don't have kids, but it's... Seeing a student achieve something, even something small, in a class that I was running was both a proud moment and a humbling one. I spent so much time worrying about messing up class and taking responsibility for everything that I almost forgot why I was here in the first place. Coaching is only about me in the sense that I have the responsibility of being a good coach, but it's also very much not about me, which seems obvious since it's all aimed at one end, the students. And in the end, all learning is self-learning. 
My job is to foster an environment where that's possible. That involves everything from the practicalities, like choosing a coaching methodology, to fostering the right culture and improving one thing every time. I can't make people learn. People do that themselves. Just like I learned a little bit about how to be a coach today, thanks to Kabir and the students. What's your name? Uh, Tushar. Josh, nice to meet you. How did it go? It's pretty good for me. It's like a lot of new things. I'm Josh. I am also Josh. Nice to meet you. I feel like I can tell that you were preparing with Professor Kabir a lot. It felt like what training normally feels like for the most part. You just be confident. Uh, George. Ah, I enjoyed it a lot, but you know, it just takes time, I think, to, uh, to make it as smooth as the coaches make it here. They've been doing it for such a long time. What rating would you give? Yeah, knowing that you're completely new, seven is pretty fair. Uh, because you, you improve from minute 15 to minute 45. Dude, and the day one guy signed up. Yeah, he signed up, bro. Yeah. This journey was a testament to perseverance and embracing new challenges. All right, good job, everybody. And I wondered at what point I could actually call myself a coach. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I guess now I can. I messed up the handshakes worse than I messed up the class. Yeah, who is this dork? Fuck. <laughs> so how did you think you did? Like, I got a little flustered at one point. Would you do it again? Uh, let's welcome Josh here. Cool. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be a special guest coach today. He just got his purple. Congrats. Yeah. Well, one of, the, one of the things he's been doing is going to the best coaches in the essentially the world for eco. It's a great uh, pleasure to have Josh here today to show us a, like, a great example of eco. Thank you, Danny. Thanks, everybody. We'll get right into it, so we'll jump into a wall game. Um, so, grip, grip fighting game. So we're gonna start with your partner just standing up, and your goal is just to have more hands on our partner than they have on us at any given time. So that might look like I have these two grips on Denny, and Denny just has one grip on me, and ideally, I keep his two hands off of me. That might look like I have one grip on Denny, and he has no grips on me. Just do a one-minute round. We'll do one three-minute round. Any questions? Any questions? All right, find a partner on three. One, two, three. As we went, there was like new little things that popped up that I had to sort of learn on the fly and then also figure out how to like adjust things. Like ideally once I get to black belt or brown belt or whatever and like, and if I'm also like coaching classes and stuff, then I'll already have practiced coaching. Is that the goal? Would you be a coach? I think eventually, yeah. Right now I'm just a, right now I'm just a YouTuber. <laughs> But I think at some point, yeah, I definitely... YouTuber that can kick ass. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, everybody, for having me back again. Thank you, Denny. It's my third time back. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the class. Cool. Thank you, thank you. Great job to everybody. Maybe we'll do more like this. Awesome. Good job, guys. Thank you for watching and big thank you to all the members of the channel and Patreon members. If you want exclusive content like the full interview I did with Kabir in this video over sushi, hit the join button below or head over to Patreon. Link is in the description. Shout out to a and Forever, I think I got that right, for commenting on my latest poll and for also being the first YouTube channel member. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for more videos like this. Also a big shout out to my home team Odyssey, my coach Greg Sirico, and my strength and conditioning coaches at Victory Submission Strength. Catch y'all in the next one.